Hello friends, we are here today in James chapter 1. So this is the first chapter of the book of James, so I'll give a little background. The writer of this is James. Uh, I found out fairly recently that his name was probably closer to Jacob than it was to James. Well, we call him James uh, <laughs> here in the English-speaking world because the English-speaking Bible that was first translated in the English was the King James Version, and the people that actually wrote it kind of changed his name a little bit. But the roots of the name James and the roots of the name Jacob are essentially the same thing. So, you know, it's all the same. <laughs> anyway, he is writing to the the Jewish Christians that are scattered around the world. You know, the diaspora, or the, the dispersion. This is a Jewish writer of, of, really he was the head of the first church, the, the church in Jerusalem. Some people have called it the Proverbs of the New Testament. It reads like the book of Proverbs, and that it's, there are a bunch of ideas put together, a little bits of wisdom. And so James here is just imparting his best bits of wisdom to the churches around to, to strengthen the church. So he starts and he says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, when you experience trials. Now, I see this whole chapter as divided into two parts here. And the first part, I think, can be described in one word, and I would say it's steadfastness. You know, the goal of the Christian life, you know, in this aspect of what James is talking about here, is steadfastness. That is to say that you are, that you are strong in your faith, that you're, you're not wavering back and forth. You know, that's, that's the goal. So compute, consider it pure joy when you see trials because that brings steadfastness. And then he goes on to talk about different things that, that encourage your steadfastness and things that take away from your steadfastness. And, you know, trials is, is just, you know, a, a major part, but he's talking about when you, when you go through trials, you can, you can pray for wisdom. And I love this. This is maybe my favorite truth in the New Testament, you know, other than salvation by grace. You know, but the most useful, useful thing in my life from day to day is, is this idea that, that when you ask for wisdom, God will give it to you. And I think that's so comforting because when I do go through trials, I do pray for wisdom. And he has always given it to me. At least, you know, I've been able to, I've been able to go through these trials that I've, that I've been through, you know, throughout my life, just knowing that at least I did what I could when you go through these trials, make sure that you have faith, that you're not doubting. Now, this is somewhere I want to stop for a second. I think this is really important. I think to some extent, doubt, doubting is, is good. I, maybe not good, you know, but it's good in the same way that pain is good. Doubting is good in a similar way where it's like, it's not really good, but it, it lets you know that there's something going on. So if you have doubt, deal with that doubt. You know, don't be afraid of having doubt. Or at least don't ignore it because that doesn't, that doesn't create steadfastness. But the way that you do get steadfastness is, is through, through trials. And so, you know, the, the trials could be, you know, dealing with doubt. However, what, the way you get through it is just by trusting in God. The more that you're able to trust in God through these trials, the more that you can have steadfastness, you, the more that you can have faith. I feel like steadfastness, steadfastness and faith are very closely related. The more that you're able to step out in faith, the more steadfastness you have in your faith. And so, yeah, deal with your doubts. Don't be afraid to have it. But when you, when you do receive it, just, just trust it. Just 
step out, just go for it. And this is, this is good. <laughs> I think another thing, interesting part of this chapter is how he talks about rich people and poorer people. And I think this is another example of, of steadfastness. You know, if, if you're a rich, you're really not stepping out in faith. You're relying on the things of this world for, for your security. And, and all that richness that you've gone after your whole life, it's not going to be worth anything. So, but the, but the poor person, the poor person who's relied on their faith, they're going to be strong in their faith. They're going to have the ability to go throughout their life with more. And these are people who are not chasing after riches. These are people that are chasing after what is good in life. These are people that are chasing after after holiness, after righteousness, after steadfastness. So it's important to note that this chapter is really not saying there's anything wrong with being rich. It's just saying that if you are rich, you should exalt in your humility. And if you're poor, you should, you should exalt in the fact that you have more ability to, to grow steadfastness. At the end of this, it says something very interesting. It says the, the man who, who is steadfast, you know, he, at the end, will receive the crown of life. So it's kind of drawing this distinction between, you know, there's, there's the riches of this world and, and then there's the people that receive the true riches. You know, that if, if, you, if you have the steadfastness, you can have the, the crown of life and that is the real riches. So the second part of this chapter is talking about, I would say, true religion. I think religion is an interesting word. Nowhere else in the Bible does it actually use the word religion. (laughs) It's kind of an odd thing, but here in the book of James, it's talking about religion. And I think it's because he's talking about religious, religious Jews. You know, Christianity and Judaism, though they were kind of together, they're so very different. And Judaism was very much a works-based religion. You know, it was, the, it, in a lot of ways, it was, it was empty, it was hollow because it didn't have the, the fulfillment of it yet. And so there was rituals that they needed to do to remember. However, Christianity is a true religion and it needs to go from your head needs to go from your actions into your heart. It needs to be part of your, your core being. And so he's saying here, you know, if you, if you don't put those things in your heart, you're like a person who's looking in the mirror and, and he doesn't change anything about him. You know, it's like if you were walking down, or if, you were, if you're looking in a mirror and you see somebody drew something inappropriate on your face and then you just walk away, you know, what, what good did the, did the mirror do? He said, you are like that person. You are walking through your life with something seriously wrong. And here you're looking into the place that has the answers and you're saying, oh, it's very interesting. I feel like I knew people like that, you know, maybe not in seminary, but people that we were reading books by in seminary. You know, they... <laughs> Their lives were were messes, and and yet they were looking at the Bible, and they're looking at all these little words. They're trying to find, oh, what does this mean? What does this mean? And I felt like a lot of them were going out of their way to make God's Word mean something that it absolutely was saying the opposite of. And so he's saying, you know, this, this true religion, it needs to go from your head to your heart. And at the very end, he said, if you want to know what true religion really is, it's not understanding these, it's not understanding, you know, these rituals, you know, it's looking at the word of God and it's telling me that I need to care for orphans and widows. It's telling me I, I need to care about the people who God cares about. I need to make a difference in this world because God loved me and I need to love him and the way that I do that is by caring for the people around me.
So anyways, that is James chapter 1. I hope you'll walk with me through the rest of this book. It's going to be a good one. All right, have a great day. Bye.